Greetings, and welcome to Earthling Cinema. I am your host, Garrix Wormuloid. This week's artifact is Clueless, a cult classic beloved by generations for its complex take on femininity, starring Paul Rudd, Donald Faison, Wallace Shawn, and Dan Hedaya. Our protagonist is Cher Horowitz, a supposedly Jewish teenager with too many of her father's credit cards and not enough of her father's thick, luscious eyebrows. Her best friend is Dion, a carbon copy of Cher whose defining characteristic is that she has a boyfriend. All the other humans pretty much let Cher do whatever she wants, except for her brother Josh. Stop it, you're making me blush. Whom the movie takes great pains to assure us is definitely a blood relative. When her numerical value starts to drop, I got a C in debate? Cher tricks two of her teachers into f***ing. Since who doesn't enjoy the mental image of their two favorite high school teachers rubbing their naked bodies all over each other to sweaty completion? Then, pleased at the early returns, Cher decides to embark on a full-time career as a sex trafficker. We've got to adopt her. She befriends a loser named Ty in order to replace her gregarious charm and natural self-confidence with a perm and a speech pattern that goes up like this, even though it's not a question? Oh god, I can't stop? Someone please help me? Cher tries to set Ty up with Elton, but their plan develops a slight wrinkle when Elton sexually assaults Cher and leaves her for dead. Hey, where are you going? Meanwhile, Cher meets a Rat Pack member named Christian and wants to join his congregation. Unfortunately, Christian chooses to be gay instead. As if the plot hadn't gotten complicated enough, things spiral out of control when Ty gets a crush on Brother Josh. What's a rich, attractive Jewess to do? Well, in this case, it's to suddenly decide Josh is the perfect guy to take for herself, despite the fact that he's her biological sibling that she's lived with since she was born. Ty, who draws the line at incest, makes fun of Cher for not knowing how to drive. You're a virgin who can't drive. Rather than make even a half-hearted stab at retaking her driver's test, Cher completely abandons that storyline and starts being Cheritable. <laughs> Sorry. She does the canned food drive, or whatever, which causes everyone to go back to being best friends. The two teachers sign a piece of paper in order to legitimize their union, and Ty settles for a guy who isn't a sexual predator. As for Cher, she and Josh get together, even though they're identical twins who shared a womb for nine months, and pop out a bunch of mutant babies who learn how to fight crime. Clueless is a retelling of Jane Austen's Emma, without all the arrogance that comes from being a book. The two works contain parallels out the wazoo. Privileged hottie with a wealthy widowed father, clueless newcomer project bitch, brother figure turned lover figure, and a honky cat named Elton who's fixated on his rocket, man. But instead of the peaceful vistas of 19th century England, clueless centers around the war zone that is a Beverly Hills high school. The film portrays the follies of focusing on social hierarchies, from the jocks to the nerds, all the way down to the faculty. For many in this world, status is paramount, and anybody who doesn't care about such distinctions is considered, if you'll pardon my French, a f***ing Frenchman. The purpose of dating is not emotional connection, but social elevationship. If you make the decision to date a high school boy, they are the only acceptable ones. And school is for socializing, not learning. What'd you do in school today? I broke in my purple clogs. While Cher has demonstrable intelligence, it can only be utilized through a very specific filter. Probably one that turns your face into a hamster or some sh if the government could just get to the kitchen, rearrange some things, we could certainly party with the Hadians. At the beginning of the film, Cher buys into this philosophy of shallowness like it's a Ponzi scheme. She assumes that upping Ty's boink factor will make her happy. Her life will be better because of me. But as Cher pushes Ty's personality further from its natural, crunchy state, the cancerous qualities of the superficial elite begin to metastasize within her. And not in the good way. Don't the slackers prefer that grassy knoll over there? <laughs> When we meet Christian, he is shown reading an analog Kindle, hinting that there's something complex below the surface. But all Cher sees is handsomeness, missing the obvious clues that he's a cake boy. Their words. You meant Christian is a cake boy! Then again, they also show Josh reading, and Cher is totally oblivious to his handsomeness. Hey, granola breath, you got something on your chin. So really, Cher's philosophy is inconsistency. 
It's only by letting go of her fixation with social trappings that she is able to discern the true value of human beings, which still rounds down to zero. She begins to appreciate the positive qualities in her one-dimensional friends. Christian, he always wants things to be beautiful and interesting. Or Dion and Murray, when they think no one is watching, are so considerate of each other. She sees that beneath the veneer of Elton's good looks and rich family lies not one, but 1.5 people. Ugh, you are a snob and a half. It seems that sometimes all the effort to keep up with the Kardashioids is a little constricting. Sometimes I have more fun vegging out than when I go partying. Maybe because my party clothes are so binding. Absent the ability to validate herself through material things, Cher opts instead to validate herself through a lack of material things, by giving them away. Ultimately, it isn't necessary for Cher to change, only for her to recognize the positive qualities she already possesses, like being an orphan. Who takes care of everyone in this household? Who makes sure that Daddy eats right? To tell you the truth, I have not seen such good doing since your mother. So the lesson here is that if you're already rich, you can be a better person by being slightly less rich. For Earthling Cinema, I'm Garrick's Wormuloid. I'm Audi. What's up, Wisecrack? Garrick's is intern Jared again. As if you need an excuse to watch more videos about great Earth movies, we got a channel that you guys are gonna love. Check out our friend Michael Tucker over at Lessons from the Screenplay. He makes fun, super smart videos analyzing the scripts of some of our favorite movies to figure out why they're so damn good. While you're still in the rom-com groove, I recommend watching Michael's video on When Harry Met Sally and smashing genre conventions. Or if you need a palate cleanser, check out one of our other favorites on The Social Network and Aaron Sorkin's writing style. So head over to Lessons from the Screenplay using the link in the description and let Michael teach you a little more about the films we love. And be sure to subscribe while you're there. And if you enjoy the stuff we've been making and want to help us make more, become a patron. We've got some patron-exclusive content up now, including podcasts on Wonder Woman and Spider-Man, as well as my video on Daddy Issues in Guardians of the Galaxy Part 2. We're always brainstorming new ways to get patrons access to cool stuff, like early access to upcoming videos, quick takes, and more. So take a peek at our Patreon page by clicking here, and don't forget to check out Lessons from the Screenplay with these links here. Catch y'all next time, Wisecrack. Peace.